So, this guy and his father-in-law were very highly respected Jewish spiritual leaders. And they were so good in their service to the Almighty God that they deemed it fit to connive and murder a supposed imposter, or so they thought. You see being the senior religious leaders of their time, from the high-ranking council of the Sanhedrin, gives them lots of exclusive privileges that they were not ready to share with anyone else. To make the matter worse, this new guy was not only trying to take a share from the spiritual cake but was about to take the whole cake from their table. They were not going to sit idle or let this happen. They were not going down without a fight. So, they set a trap for this newcomer in the block, with the hope of setting him up for elimination, and of course their trap captured him, or so they thought. They skipped some rules of the game and went out of the code book to capture this intruder for a summary rig trial in the death of the night, because they were in haste to achieve their evil plan at whatever means. Well, this story happened a day before Jesus was crucified and the events surrounding Jesus' arrest and subsequent trial, as outlined in the Gospel of John, reveal a departure from traditional Jewish procedures, particularly in the convening of a hearing by the high priest Caiaphas. In accordance with Jewish tradition, when Jesus was apprehended by the temple guards, he should have been confined to the temple stockade until a complete hearing before the Sanhedrin, the priestly council, could be convened. However, Caiaphas chose to deviate from this customary process and expedite the proceedings. According to the Gospel of John, Caiaphas held a prominent position as the son-in-law of the high priest Annas. This familial connection is often associated with Annas, also identified as Ananus the son of Seth, a figure referenced by the Jewish historian Josephus. Josephus sheds light on Annas' significant role, noting that he was ousted from his high priestly position upon the death of Augustus. Despite his removal, Annas left a lasting legacy through his five sons, each of whom ascended to the prestigious position of high priest in succession. The Gospel narrative, coupled with historical insights from Josephus, paints a complex picture of the high priestly lineage during this pivotal period. The decision by Caiaphas to break with tradition and hastily convene a hearing underscores the charged atmosphere and political tension surrounding Jesus' trial. This video will shed light into the intersection of biblical accounts and historical context, the dynamics within the high priestly family, coupled with the deviations from established traditions, add layers of complexity to the unfolding narrative of Jesus' arrest and subsequent legal proceedings. The fate of the Sanhedrin, the ancient Jewish Supreme Council, is marked by historical shifts and transformations. The Great Sanhedrin, a significant institution in Jewish governance, met regularly with exceptions for festivals and the Sabbath. However, its activities underwent changes over time. The year 358 C marked by the significant decision regarding the Hebrew calendar, is often considered a symbolic endpoint for the great Sanhedrin's authoritative judgments. Subsequent centuries saw further challenges, including the diaspora and the dispersion of Jewish communities. The absence of a centralized authority like the Sanhedrin led to the development of different legal traditions and interpretations within Judaism. It's important to note that while the Great Sanhedrin faced a decline in its institutional influence, smaller councils and rabbinic authorities continued to play roles in interpreting Jewish law and guiding communities. The absence of a universally recognized central authority like the Sanhedrin contributed to the diversity of Jewish legal and religious practices. The historical details surrounding the demise of the Great Sanhedrin and the later years of figures like Caiaphas and Annas are complex and precise information can be challenging to ascertain. The Great Sanhedrin faced a series of challenges, including persecution by the Eastern Roman Empire, which eventually led to its abolition in 425 C. The struggle against persecution marked a difficult period for this ancient Jewish institution. Regarding Caiaphas, historical records regarding his death are not definitively established. The available sources do not provide a clear and universally agreed upon date for his passing. As for Annas, historical records indicate that he served as the high priest for a formal period of 10 years from 6 to 1580. 
His removal from the position occurred when the procurator Valerius Gratis took action when Anas was 36 years old. The circumstances and reasons behind his removal are not always explicitly detailed in historical accounts. The assassination of Anas' son, Anas the Younger, Ananus the son of Ananus, took place in 66 AD during a tumultuous period in Jewish history. Anas the Younger advocated for peace with Rome, a stance that led to conflict within the Jewish community. His assassination is part of the larger context of the First Jewish-Roman War, a pivotal event that culminated in the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 AD. The historical intricacies of this period involve political, religious, and social dynamics, and interpretations may vary among historians and scholars. The information available is often derived from a combination of historical texts, including Josephus, the New Testament, and other ancient sources. Now, let us start story of Annas and his son-in-law Caiaphas from the beginning. In the heart of ancient history, Joseph ben Caiaphas emerges as a central figure, a name resonating through time. Born around 14 BC and departing this world around 46 AD, Caiaphas, a significant presence in the New Testament, takes center stage as the Jewish high priest during the transformative years of Jesus' ministry, as documented by the esteemed historian Josephus. Caiaphas, often referred to simply as Caiaphas, is more than a historical figure. He is a complex character woven into the fabric of biblical narratives. The Gospels of Matthew, Luke, and John unveil a multifaceted portrait of this mysterious figure, casting him as an orchestrator of the intricate plot to bring about the demise of Jesus. Notably, he presides over the pivotal Sanhedrin trial that would shape the course of history. To delve into the life of Caiaphas is to explore the intersections of faith, power, and the unfolding drama of ancient times. Our primary windows into his world lie in the sacred pages of the New Testament and the meticulously penned accounts of Josephus. According to historical records, Caiaphas ascended to the esteemed position of high priest following the deposition of Simon ben Camathus, an event orchestrated by the Roman procurator Valerius Gratus. According to the Babylonian Talmud, Yevmat 15b, the family name is presented as Kapai, while the Jerusalem Talmud, Yevamot 1 colon 6, introduces the term Nekephi. In a fascinating twist, the Mishnah, specifically para 3 verse 5, intriguingly refers to the family name as Hakkaf, possibly suggesting a playful association with the monkey as a symbolic stance against the Pharisees. Anas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, played a significant role in shaping the course of Jewish affairs, serving as the high priest from AD 6 to 15. His influence persisted beyond his official tenure, extending into the era when Caiaphas assumed the high priesthood. Together, Anas and Caiaphas may have aligned themselves with the Sadducees, a religious movement in Judea known for drawing its membership primarily from the affluent Jewish elite. The enduring nature of Caiaphas's tenure as high priest, spanning 18 years, suggests a notable and potentially collaborative relationship with the Roman authorities. This prolonged period indicates the stability and effectiveness in his role, implying a certain level of cooperation with the ruling powers. In the Gospel of John, the collaboration between Annas and Caiaphas is underscored as they convene the Sanhedrin in response to the miraculous raising of Lazarus. The account in the Gospel of Luke introduces a parable that has sparked speculation. The suggested connection between the rich man in the parable and Caiaphas, his father-in-law, along with his five brothers-in-law, adds a layer of complexity to the narrative. Claude Joseph Dreyex and others propose that this parable could be a subtle critique of Caiaphas and his familial connections. As the influence of Jesus continues to grow, Caiaphas, along with the chief priests and Pharisees, grapples with the dilemma of how to handle this charismatic figure. Their concern is palpable, fearing that if Jesus is allowed to persist, the widespread belief in him could attract unwanted attention from the Romans. The apprehension extends to the potential consequences of Roman intervention, posing a threat to both the sacred sites and the nation itself. In the Gospel of John, 
the unfolding events paint a vivid picture of Jesus' encounter with the religious and political authorities of his time. Jesus, having been apprehended, is first brought before Annas, whose proximity is noted as his palace is closer. Annas, inquisitive about Jesus' disciples and teachings, initiates the questioning. Subsequently, Jesus is sent to Caiaphas, where the stakes take a political turn. Caiaphas, the high priest, makes a calculated decision, expressing the belief that it would be more advantageous for one man, referring to Jesus, to perish than for the potential jeopardy of the whole nation. This political maneuvering by Caiaphas echoes themes found in rabbinical discussions within the Talmud and Midrash. Crucially, the Romans adhered to their own legal protocols, refraining from performing executions for violations of halakha, the Jewish religious law. In this light, a charge of blasphemy, though significant in a religious context, held limited sway in the Roman legal framework, including that of Pontius Pilate. Caiaphas, recognizing the need for a charge that would resonate within both the religious and political spheres, sought to establish Jesus' guilt on multiple fronts. Beyond the accusation of blasphemy, Caiaphas aimed to underscore Jesus' claim to be the Messiah, this proclamation carried weight not only as a religious transgression but also as a potential challenge to Roman authority. The messianic claim, especially in the context of the Davidic kingship, signified a potential rallying point for those who sought a restoration of Jewish sovereignty. Caiaphas, cognizant of the broader implications, framed the charges against Jesus in a way that would not only satisfy the religious concerns of the Sanhedrin but also resonate with the political apprehensions of Roman authorities. The narrative in Acts forecasts a spotlight on the continued interactions between the apostles, particularly Peter and John, and the formidable figures of Annas and Caiaphas. This encounter is marked by a miraculous healing that propels the apostles into the presence of the high priest and his father-in-law. The healing of a crippled beggar serves as the catalyst for Peter and John's appearance before Annas and Caiaphas. The religious authorities, intrigued yet skeptical, question the source of the apostles' authority to perform such a remarkable miracle. In a moment charged with divine inspiration, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, attributes the power behind the healing to Jesus of Nazareth. The eloquence and conviction with which Peter articulates his testimony leave a profound impression on Caiaphas and the assembled priests. The apostles' lack of formal education is overshadowed by their compelling portrayal of Jesus as their savior. It becomes apparent that, despite their perceived lack of scholarly credentials, Peter and John possess a profound understanding of the man they follow. In response to this unexpected eloquence and the undeniable impact of the miracle, Caiaphas, recognizing the potential repercussions of attempting to refute the spread of this extraordinary event, chooses a different course of action. Rather than challenging the apostles directly, he opts to dismiss them but not without a cautionary directive. Caiaphas, in agreement with the other priests, acknowledges the futility of suppressing the already widespread knowledge of the miraculous healing. Instead, their focus shifts to cautioning the apostles against further propagation of the name of Jesus. However, Peter and John, resolute in their commitment to their faith, respond with unwavering conviction. In a powerful declaration, they state, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. This resolute stance encapsulates the unwavering dedication of the apostles to their mission, fueled by their first-hand experiences with Jesus. As we delve into this poignant moment, we witness the clash between religious authority and divine conviction, setting the stage for the continued challenges faced by the early followers of Jesus.